Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where I talk about TV shows and adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Riverdale. So, before we begin, I will bring up like the little dream sequence we saw at the beginning of the episode. I really thought that was kind of interesting. Um, I'm not that familiar with the Archie comic books, but to me, from what I can piece together just from looking at that little opening, that was like every, like at least a lot of the main characters in their old school costumes or maybe it's their canonical outfits that maybe not maybe not even just the older archie comic books but at least some different versions of the archie comic books had them in those particular outfits so i thought that was kind of interesting because like for instance you had jug hat wearing his like you know the crown that he's known to be wearing except obviously in the show they modernized it a bit and you know made it more realistic and make it so he's wearing a beanie most of the time so but uh that was just a little neat, neat thing in the beginning i was like that's so nicely put um so running through a lot of the story, we got to break things down. So there's a whole situation of like everyone's coming together to look for Polly. Obviously, like Cheryl's friend Ginger passed on a text about Polly escaping. Polly told her parents, and then it turned into a blew up into a big thing. She's even texting like, "Oh yeah, Polly killed my brother." It's so obvious. And then basically, we have two different search parties. We had the Blossoms gathering some people to do a search party. We also had the Coopers having their own search party. Then they both collided and everything. And then Mama Blossoms basically like, "Oh, I'm gonna tell the whole world that your daughter is a killer. The whole town's gonna know it." And then doing what Alice does best, she turns the situation upside down. I guess it's the whole like reporter anger, anger, it, angle of her of being able to be like, "Yo." Oh, she tries to like smear our names. She won't be able to. We're going on the defensive, or in her words, like we're doing damage control. It's like let's stand together as a, a proud family. Uh, we stand by our our daughter, and it's like basically, oh, there's no way Polly could do it, and then drops the bombshell because she was pregnant with Jason's baby. Everyone was like, what? And then I was like, all right, the Blossoms wouldn't know, would they? Because I'm sure the moment like her parents found out, they locked her up immediately because they didn't want to let that out. Especially didn't want, definitely didn't want the Blossoms to know. And you see Cheryl kind of being like surprised, which to her, she's willing to help with the whole situation because obviously without going into too much detail, well, really quickly back to Alice. I love the fact is that she goes a little sympathetic. She starts crying a little bit like, Polly, I just want you to come home. It's like you're, you're playing it up for the cameras. I can't look at you and take you honestly because it's like you have so many faces. You're I've seen your bad side. You are a bad person on many levels. It's like I get you want to protect your children, but you have you and your husband have like secrets and you're very evil and twisted in some regard. So it's kind of like I can't look at you without thinking like obviously you're manipulating. I mean, especially later on in the episode when it came up to the conversation of like because Betty's like, OK, so what's going to happen when Paula? Will she be able to live? It's like, of course, honey, we'd, we'd have her. I happily have her and everything. It's like, okay, so what about the baby? What would the baby say? It's like, oh yeah, me and us and Polly came to the decision that it'd be best to give the baby away. And it's like, oh, you know, you a young mother and everything. And then you have Betty looking at her like, you lying piece of crap. Because Betty had already, I mean, Polly had already told Betty that she wanted to keep the baby and that the parents, that her parents wanted to put up for adoption. And she's sitting there and lying to Betty's face. That's exactly what I'm like. That's why I don't believe her when she was crying and everything. Because it's like you're such a faker. Because you know how to play, you know, tug on people's heartstrings. You know how to manipulate people. Because it seems like you're doing that with your family. You're doing it with your own daughters. And it's like, why would you do that? Like, I guess, like I said, I mean, I hope I want to know what went down in the past with um her mom to make her mom twisted the way she is. Like, has she always been like that? Is it just because of Jason the reason why she's like that? I don't know. But it's also about trying to help out with the whole baby situation. You know, she wants to help her sister out because she doesn't want her sister to have to leave because she wants her sister nearby so she can see her whenever she wants to. They've been separated for so long. It's like, I don't want to be separated from my sister no any more than we already have been. It's like, I want to be there for her and the baby. And you also have Cheryl be wanting to do the same thing, which obviously Betty has her biggest problems with. I mean, obviously it's because Cheryl kind of started this whole witch hunt in the first place, but also because it's just like, you know, Cheryl's kind of queen bee and it's like, if you're just only interested in yourself, so why would I think that you're here to help me and my sister? Because she'll be told that she wants to help the baby because the baby's like the last piece of her brother she has left. And it's like, if she could help that baby, then I guess in her own way, it's almost like helping her brother in her sense, because it's like, oh, making sure that her um, child, that her brother's child is taken care of. But then her mom starts asking, because mom, 
because Betty has a sit down with Cheryl and the, um, her parents and the parents are like, oh, yeah, we'll be there to help you support your sister and everything during this tough time. Because it's like, oh, we kind of owe it to her because she's obviously holding a child of our son and everything. It's like, oh, where is she, by the way? She's like, I don't think it's a good thing to tell you. I'm going to keep that to myself. She's like, oh, don't you trust us? And then my mom and I'm like, no. Don't trust them. And it's a good thing not to trust them because Cheryl is talking to her mom. And her mom's like, oh, have you ever seen Polly do drugs? It's like, oh, she's like, no. Why are you asking all these questions? I'm just trying to see if she's a fit mother. And then it clicks in Cheryl's head. And she even warns Polly. She's like, don't trust my parents. Run away as fast as you can because my parents are going to try and make it so that you're not, say, like, you're not a fit mother and try to take your baby away from you. So it's like, no matter where they go, they're screwed. It's like, can't be with her parents because her parents are going to give the baby away. Can't go with the Blossoms because of Blossom. The Coopers will give the baby away. The Blossoms will take the baby for themselves. And who knows what they'll do to Polly. And it's just like you find her in the middle of all of this. It sucks. And it, I mean, granted, luckily she doesn't have to go through this by herself. Sadly, she doesn't have Jason. But at least she has Betty and everyone, all, all of her friends to kind of back her up with this whole situation. I mean, granted, to be fair, I don't know. It's just a crazy situation. And then on top of that, you know, now she's living with Veronica and Hermione. Hermione, I, I keep saying her name weird every time. Which, they had their problems this episode. Obviously, it's still the ramifications of, like, you forged my signature. Which, I didn't even think about last episode. The legality behind it of, like, yeah, you forged my signature. That's a crime. You should tell Dad. Which, she's like, yeah, I'll tell your dad about the whole situation soon. Which, once again, one of the reasons why she was like, yeah, we need to do this is to legitimize the business. So, once again, I'm like, she's doing all this for her husband. But I think it's more so than anything for their family. Um, obviously Veronica does her thing where she's like, she's partying with Josie, Kevin and Reggie, just kind of get her mom's attention. It's like, then like, it's kind of like their back and forth thing, which Veronica kind of broke down why she felt that way because it's like, and it was kind of a very like sad reason. It's like for her, when her mom, her dad got arrested, they took everything from her, the clothes they had, all the stuff they had, just like their entire life fell apart the moment her father was arrested. But her mom sat her down and was like, the one thing they can't take away from you is your name. And so when her mom just forced her name like it was nothing, it just felt like Veronica didn't matter because it's like in that one moment, her mom took her name, like it meant nothing, like took her name for granted. So it's like, if you treat my name like it's nothing, that almost means like you treat me like I'm nothing. My name, which you said was so important and no one can take from me, which you did, making it seem like nothing, then maybe I'm nothing. It's kind of how she looks at it. And it's like, that's how she felt like her mom was treating her with this whole decision. Which her and her mom had to sit down and they're like, okay, we're going to talk this out. Her mom was like, I'm going to figure this whole thing out with Fred. She's like, well, what about that? She's like, I don't know. And I need you to give me time to figure that out, like where I stand in this whole situation. Yes, there's feelings between me and Fred developing, but what that actually means, I won't know until you give me the chance to find out. Like the fact of the matter is, me and your dad have our, our particular situation, but Veronica's reasoning for it is she doesn't want her dad to think like that some decision was made without his consent, that he does, she doesn't want him to think like, oh, she backs that, which we see in the episode. She's there, Veronica's there with her mom when she's calling him dad, so... It's a situation where Veronica's like, okay, fine. Just don't be with Fred here. Like, as you can try and figure out your whole situation, which is like, as an adult, yeah, she has a right to. Obviously, Veronica's not going to have the easiest time because it's like, I, she once she brought up last episode, she wants her family together again. She thought that's what it was going to be, but now it's like things are changing. Obviously, her dad's in jail. It doesn't change the fact is that her and her mom, him and her mom are still married. So it's like she's having her own affairs situation, but it's a situation where it's like, you know, at the end of the day, her mom is a grown woman that can make her own decisions. You might not 100% agree with them, but they're still her decisions. And she'd like Veronica's support, but it's understandable why Veronica wouldn't all be like, backing her in this whole situation. So, But a big part of this episode deals with um, mainly Jughead. I like kind of diving a lot into his family situation, which we also, well, not only us, uh, also Archie found out about Jughead's situation. Apparently, he's been sleeping at the school, uh, in particular, like, a janitor's closet. That's where he's been staying ever since down they sh uh, ever since they shut down the drive-in, which is where he was living before. And Archie's like, wait, what? Dude, are you serious? Why didn't you tell me? He's like, no, dude, this is my situation. I'm going to get you involved, even to the point he doesn't even want uh, Betty to know. I mean, and then even Archie found out about the whole him Betty thing. He's like, no, 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 I'm cool. I'm just, I just want to know. Because even Veronica, you know, it's because Archie, I mean, the um, 
Jughead put his arm around her, which I love that little moment where he was walking her home. He's like, oh, yeah, you know, she's like, you didn't have to want me. He's like, yeah, I had to because it's like, you know, when we're, you know, been through what we've been through, you know, he's not around saying the boyfriend girlfriend thing, I guess, because it's like he's nervous and he doesn't quite know where he stands in that whole situation, like where they stand, which they've kissed and everything. But it's like they really don't know how to label what they are. So just the nervousness behind that, I really thought that was kind of cute. But at the same time, getting back to it, uh, we find out more about Jughead's situation. His dad, after getting fired by uh, Archie's dad, ended up drinking a lot, never really got another job. So his mom took his his sister, whose name is Jelly Bean, which apparently she likes to shorten it to JB because she's trying to be cool and everything. Um, moved away with, to live with her grandparents. But the question is, why did, like, argue, like I want to know why she decided to leave Jughead. Why didn't she take him with her? I mean, I guess it's a situation where it's like maybe she was always meaning to, or maybe it's a situation where Jughead made the decision, like, she'd stay with Jellybean and he'd stay here to make sure his dad, like, maybe I think on some level, maybe Jughead's a free to leave his dad alone because he doesn't know what his dad might do. His dad might fall apart because it, like if his entire family left, maybe Jughead will like feel like his dad will lose his mind, kind of go a little crazy. Um, I kept looking at the actor who plays his dad and uh, I kept thinking he looked a little familiar. It's, uh, I think the actor's name is Skeet Orch. Um, he's been in stuff, but the thing I know him from was a like short-lived uh, Law & Order LA series. He was actually one of the main cops in the show. I mean, spoiler alert, his character ended up dying. But I think that's him. He looks a little different, though. I think it's just the beard and just kind of raggedness kind of look he kind of has. And this kind of throws me for a loop. But um, I'm thinking that's kind of... I, I bet you on some level, I kind of think on some level, maybe Jughead resents his dad a little for that, too. It's like, I'm here mainly because I have to stay here with you. That basically his life is tied to his dad. Just so I make sure that you don't completely fall off, off, like, off the wagon and stuff like that. That's why I'm here. But the reason why he doesn't go home is because his dad's like that. The place is actually a wreck. They don't really, his dad doesn't really take care of the place. He doesn't wash dishes or anything. He spends most of his time drinking. And I think that's why, because for, because in Jughead's head, it's a situation of like, it all started because his dad got fired. So he does hold some animosity towards Fred too, because it's like, because you fired my dad, it led to these events. It led to my family being broken up. And it's even something Archie kind of calls his dad out for, because the conversation comes up. Because obviously Fred offers him his job back. Obviously there's some reservations at first, but then, you know, because he wants to make Jughead proud, make it so that his son will look at him without looking at, in his words, look at him like he's not, look at him and not look at him like he's a piece of garbage. So him and Fred kind of move past their issues, and he starts working there. Which he also tells Hermione, Hermione, don't say anything about me being, you know, a West Side Serpent, and I won't, you know, you know, as long as you don't step on a, a snake, it has no reason to bite you. Essentially, is what he was saying. So you stay out of my business, I'll stay out of yours. Which apparently there's a whole situation of like her husband fixed the whole situation. Like, like apparently they were owed some more money, but it's no longer an issue. Um, but the thing we ended up finding out, because obviously they had that sweet moment, but then he starts kind of getting a little douchey because Fred's like offering to pay, but he's like, no, 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 I said I'll pay it. And then, yeah, Joe being like, no, no, I'll pay. He's like, no, put your damn money away. Don't worry, I'm going to treat you and everything. It's just like he's being a little controlling because I guess in his mind he doesn't want a handout from Fred and find out the reason why. Apparently, that the business that Fred currently runs, they were partners in it. But in a way, he makes it seem like he's like, yeah, I took a few jobs here and there. Not, not the most legal. One of them got me in trouble. Fred bailed me out and everything, but he used that bail out as an excuse to be like, oh, yeah, I bought you out for your side of the business and cut me out. And it's like, not only did he lose his job, but also his fraction of the business, all the money he would have made from it. Even if he had sold off his fraction of it, like the money he actually got wasn't worth it. Archie talks to his dad about it because there's two sides to every story. Archie's dad is like, I bailed him out so many times. I was always there for him. I gave him more than two chances. But the fact of the matter is he just kept messing up. And so he had no choice but to uh, fire him because what happened is that he stole some stuff. Because as I thought so before, the way he was telling the stories, like he stole some stuff and was still stole stuff from their business and was selling it to other people. So it's probably a situation where he was like, there's a term for it. I'm just not sure. Like taking those materials and un probably um, underselling 
I don't know if underselling would be the right term, but probably selling at a lower plus price to other people and taking the money for himself. Like, oh, obviously they won't miss these supplies. These supplies are really won't notice, but they noticed and he got fired for it. So that was the main situation. But for Archie, it's a situation where it's like, yeah, obviously you you don't want to help someone else who's drowning. Obviously I get it. But the fact of the matter is when you left him, when you left um, Mr. Jones out there to drown, you left, you know, Jughead to, out there to drown with him with no lifeboat. So Obviously, they see even more of a twist when it's like, oh yeah, everyone brings when uh, the uh, Kevin's dad arrest, not necessarily arrest per se. Jughead brings him in for questioning because it's like bringing up stuff from his childhood. The fact is, uh, he burned down a school when he was younger, six, no, like six years ago or something like that. It was like elementary school or something like that, which he explains like, yo, I was playing with matches. And then there's also the conversation of the fact is that he has a problem with everyone because he got bullied and pushed around. It's like, you basically, it's like you're the perfect suspect. You're the loner. You didn't really like Jason or anyone on the football team. So obviously all signs point to you, which Jughead did not like that. But you have Archie and his dad kind of lying and coming up with an alibi. They even cover their tracks later on to make sure that Jughead, you know, doesn't, you know, get put on as a suspect. He was saying like, oh, yeah, during that time of Jason's murder, uh, he was working with us. I make sure wonder where exactly was Jughead. I'm sure that conversation is going to come up eventually. Things are going to come up and be like, Jughead, where were you on July 4th? He was probably living in because he has no alibi because he was most likely by himself because he is a bit of a loner. Um, I'm sure these recent circumstances are the first time he's ever really been around anyone because, like, obviously he kept his distance from Archie and Betty and everyone. But it's like now it's like this is the first time he's really been around other people. Like subsequently since we've seen the series, but I mean, granted, we don't know what he was really like before. I mean, like from the conversation, it seemed like he kept to himself. So, but now it's a situation of like. He obviously tells his dad, he's like, Dad, don't don't go in there starting any problems because his dad got drunk and wasn't there. He was like, can you, you know, can, he was asking them to call his dad, but his dad was nowhere to be found when he needed him most. So it's a situation again where it's like, I called you, I needed you, but you weren't there for me. And before he could go in there and call some problems, Jughead's like, please don't make matters worse. Which, you know, Jughead's like, no, I'll go back and live with you. And his dad's like, no, 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 you live with them. He's like, you just give me a month or two and I'll kind of get myself back in order. You do trust me, right? And Jughead's like, yeah. So he does have faith in his dad. He wants to believe it. He, whether his dad will actually show up for work the next day, he doesn't know. But as we saw at the end of the episode, his dad started drinking again. So it's like I said, it's a, it's a, it's a sad, sad situation to see Jughead in that situation. I mean, the fact is no one knows about that. Even Betty. I mean, granted, when Betty was able there to see that whole situation, but she didn't know. She probably still doesn't even know about the whole Jughead like sleeping at school situation. So. I do wonder about the whole uh, Jug and Betty situation because he had the whole dream about like, oh, you're stabbing me in the back, you know, because there's the whole Betty and Archie situation. But then again, there's the whole Archie and Valerie situation, which did I bring that up that last episode? I kept like thinking, I don't think I brought that up. I brought up the Betty and um, Jug, but I don't think I brought up the Valerie and um, Archie. So it's definitely going to be, that's just very interesting. But, I, you know, I don't know if. Uh, obviously you saw, felt a little bit something there, but I was like, maybe that's my imagination, obviously, because they're working together and stuff like that. But it's like, no, it turns out that that's a thing. So obviously you see Archie kind of having that look on his face when he finds out about Betty and Jughead. So I wonder if things are going to get complicated going forward. I hope not, but we would just kind of have to wait and see. But also the twist that we see at the end of the episode is that Jason's jacket is actually inside of Jughead's dad's closet. Which, I don't think he killed Jason. What most likely happened is he was hired to blow up that place. Blow up the car, burn it. Mainly because he's part of the, the serpents. The serpents are tied, you know, they're a gang. I'm sure they're tied to drugs. They're tied to Jason in the sense of, like, Jason was selling drugs for money, so he probably acted as their mule. Like I brought up last episode, the connection to, like, Twin Peaks comparison. The fact that most likely is that he was kind of the Bobby in this situation where, you know, obviously he needed money. Maybe he went to the wrong people, owed some people money, so he needed to get money back. He couldn't really bring his parents into it just because he was trying to get away from him in the first place. Or maybe selling drugs was his way of getting away from his parents. Nevertheless, I mean, the way his friend was talking about it a few episodes back, that seems like to be the case. But most likely what the case was, it was probably Archie, I mean, uh, Jughead's dad burned it to cover the tracks of, like, the fact is there are drugs there and bringing the connection back to the gang. Like, 
or the fact is that they were hired to do that. But I'm thinking that being hired was my original thought, but now I'm thinking like they burned it to cover their own tracks because the fact is they're connected to the drugs and everything. They didn't want the drugs to come back to them because it might, the drugs might have their fingerprints on it and stuff. So that's where I look at it is that like, I know they had nothing to do with Jason's death. Most likely you could also allude to it like, oh, they might because they were business partners, but I think it was just, just purely that a business. So you, You'll probably find out later on. What will probably come up is like Jason still probably owed them money for all the drugs that he probably didn't sell and stuff like that. Hence why, why there's so many still left in a car. I mean, maybe he died before he could sell them all or maybe he decided to back down from it. There's so many possibilities. But like I said, I definitely don't believe like even the serpents themselves, especially it's going to get complicated because remember, Kevin started making out with one of its members and he's like, oh, your dad is the sheriff. Yeah, you're with the serpents. Yeah, well, who cares? Like, you know, and we're back to vigorously making out. We haven't seen that storyline come up, but with this new development, I'm sure that's going to come up sooner or later. Those paths have to cross. Why? For drama's sake. So, just another excellent episode. The show just gets better and better with its twists and turns, and I just cannot wait to see where we go from here. Uh, Riverdale will be taking a short break, and it will be returning on March 30th, so that's three weeks from now. So, a little bit of a break, so I hate to have to wait, but I'll accept it and wait so, uh, to see how this all plays out. And really, that's all I'm going to talk about this episode. So, the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.